Alrighty, welcome to episode 2 here of season 4 of Manager 20 Manchester United career here and today we start in the Champions League. We've had a good start of the season, we're playing well, we're in a good position, we're 4 points clear after 6 games which is quite, I'd say, very very good. But we've, you know, we'll get on to it in a sec. Anyway, first up let's talk about the Champions League group. We've got a brilliant Champions League group, let's be honest here, you know, I couldn't have asked for better three teams in the group. Benfica, I think, will absolutely slash to them. Wolfsburg, I don't have any fear of it all. And Olympiacos, I mean, I don't even know who even plays them. So, you know, three, I'd say, teams that no, won't give us too much of a trouble. But then again, we'll probably lose to one or two of them. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to absolutely smash our way through this group. Let's go through, we'll catch up with you guys. Um, the big red flag here is the, the Portsmouth game. But we'll, get, we'll, we'll get to that in a sec. We play Brighton. This is the second game of the league, and to be honest, I think this team is really firing on the cylinders, and exactly what I was looking for. I think Sanchez is a brilliant signing. I think Jonathan Tal has been a brilliant signing so far. We started off with the Anthony Martial goal here in the first half after 30 minutes. It did take us the 81 minutes to get that second, you know, insurance goal, but eventually we did get it. It was Luca Dino with an absolute smack into that corner. I mean, absolutely howl past the keeper that one. And then just a minute before injury time, Brighton went for it. Angel Gomez single-handedly just absolutely ripping Barnet, or Jesus Christ, calling Barnet, <laughs> Brighton a new one as he easily scores that one. 3 0 win there, dominating performance. I don't think Brighton were ever in that game, to be honest to them. We then had Old Trafford and we played Tottenham, and this was a little bit of an nervy game. We were down 2 0, and it was not the best performance in the world. We were poor. But thankfully, we dug deep. We we came back into it. As you see here, the first goal there. I think that was, uh, I don't know who that is. You got scored it for them, but wide open the back post. And then, an almost nothing play. Stefan Bergewijn finds Troy Parrott, who's the wonder kid, Irish wonder kid striker. Easy goal there. And we were in a, we were in a dogfight here. But we, you know, fought back. Senguis here finds Bruno Fernandes, and Bruno Fernandes just rifles it past Andre Onana into the back of the net and suddenly we're back in the game and then the 55th minute second half we get equalizer martial brilliant shot there absolutely flummoxes onana and that was 2-2 and then well it was a bit cruel that the tottenham player got sent off but look he was on second yellow so he's got no one to blame but himself as bruno fernandez puts his second of the game in and to wrap up all three points in fairness to spurs they did nearly get the get a, a draw in the last few minutes so that could have been uh, pretty uh, annoying if they managed to get a draw from us. But look at the shots we had. I mean, we've we've really been hitting. You know, we're we've been hitting the right gears, the right time. We're pretty much in sixth, I'd say, most of the time. Southampton. This was an interesting game. It didn't feel like. It felt like one of those games that I felt we could drop points in, and by dropping points, I feel like we could have drawn it if things go differently. But thankfully, we got a second goal in the, in the second half. There's a lovely finish from from Genji Sunda, as uh, I've learned how to pronounce his name finally. But yeah, it took the 82nd minutes. Genji's his corner to do Axel's one CV, puts it away there, and just makes it feel a bit better because that was definitely not a game that we had sealed up, and it, it did take until that second goal to, to really have that one wrapped up. Um, it's happened again. Fourth season. Carabao Cup, third round, four penalty shootouts. We've lost, I think we've lost three of them, haven't we? We've lost three of them. I, I don't know what to say. I really don't. As you can see, 24 shots to three, 11 on target to two, three chances to their none, and we couldn't get the job done. Now, is that team good enough? Yeah, it is. Why they couldn't win, I have no idea. But look, it happened, we're out of the Carabao Cup, maybe it's a blessing in disguise, we'll let us focus on the league a bit more, but, ah, you know, it wasn't meant to be this year. I guess we won't be able to defend their trophy, so fair play to, you know, Portsmouth, they've knocked uh, the defending champions out. We then played Burnley, I was very happy with this performance, but at the same time, I was disappointed in the goals we conceded. I thought we could do a little bit better. Uh, we did miss a penalty in the 10th minute, that would have really, I think, buried the game then and there, but... We start off in the early first bit of goal here, just an absolute chaotic, you know, whatever you want to describe it as, show there. We've got the second then, 10 minutes in the second half. Uh, Genji, uh, I tell you, it's with the G, with an absolute rifle. I mean, he absolutely smacked the day out of that one. And then we made it 3-0, and you know, I think the lads got a little 
over complacent and I think you know kind of untied the shoelaces and you know Burnley came you know back in with the graph that's that's a typical Burnley performance you know they, they're gonna graph they don't they necessarily have the ability but they'll graph and Dwight McNeil there just I, I don't understand how you got so much space there that was a real something that I'd love to you know bang on the board about in in, in training afterwards but we haven't played Watford at home and yeah, we just absolutely put these guys to the sword. They played five at the back. It didn't matter if they played 10 at the back. It was going to be an absolute onslaught from the first minute. And I just feel like once you get the squad that you want to build around you, this is the things that can happen. And you see that from Pogba left footed as well. I mean, that's just showing off now at this rate, you know, absolutely unbelievable. But the midfield is perfect. I love the strike force we have. And I think the defense we have is rock solid. That was the second there from Senji, just as the second half started. Lovely bit of that. Unfortunately, Watford player did a pretty horrific two-footer from behind, but that didn't make any difference as Martial continued to do that. He would have scored that goal regardless if they had 11 men or not. And then in the 89th minute, approaching the 90th minute, Tonali here picks out Lamar, picks out Bruno Fernandes, and well... I don't think there's any, any comment needs to be said on how good that is for a finish because it was simply unreal. 46 shots to three, 23 on target to two. We just battered them out of the park. I mean, it was not even a contest, really. Anyway, enough with that. That is how things have been going. Let's get into it. I was actually tempted to do the Leeds United game, but uh, I felt it was probably best to do this one. Anyway, here's the team I'm going to rock with today. Uh, Dini is going to come in. Ta, Twin CB, Dalo, De Gea to the back line. I'm going to go with their basic out front choice. I'm going to give Martial a rest today and I'll play Vlahovic up front. I'm probably going to, you know, rotate the strike force in the Champions League because I feel like we can we can get away with that in a way. I know that's kind of a, the wrong word maybe to use, but I do feel like we can be a little bit more um, aggressive in that situation, get away with it. Anyway, they're playing a 4-2-2. Balotelli and Giroud up front. That is, that, that's absolutely wild. Anyway, let's make these guys pay. We're going to absolutely slap these guys silly, hopefully. And again, I've been talking a lot of crap and we haven't even kicked the football, which is never a good sign. But here we go. First half, Champions League, game one. I think getting off to a good start in this is key. I think if we can, you know, if we can be qualified after four games and games five and six, we can, you know, send the, the second side out. That would be, that would be ideal. So that's what I'm hoping to. Anyway, Jonathan Ta, one of the big, big signings this off season, finds Diego Dallo. Dallo, he's got time. He's got a cross. Whips out to Dinia. Dinia can whip these. Dinia can hit them. He hits them well, but the crossbar coming to the defense of Olympiacos early here. That was a good chance and probably should have worked a little bit better there. Unfortunately, no uh, poacher there to you know, steal the goods and, and lay it into the back of the net. But look, we're only 10 minutes in this game. There's plenty of time this one. We're playing well, I think, so far. So happy to let that go. I think the 4-2-3-1 really does suit. Uh, the team we have. I don't think we really suit a 4-3-3. I think it's the lack of a defensive mid. Like if we had a really good defensive mid, I think I could I could, you know, find that. I didn't think we had that with Florentine Luis. That's kind of why I let him go. He's actually gone to Man City now, which is an interesting deal. But I think Bruno Fernandes as, as that cam is, is a much better system there. You know, some people argue it's a 4-3-3, but I think it's more of a 4-2-3-1. Anyway, in back Pogba with the oh, that crossbar there is really becoming Olympiacos' best friend here today as another one bounces off that and probably uh, a better chance than the first one. But look at the shots, 10 shots to 3, 3 on target to 2. They've had the chance though, which is interesting. So look, we need to start turning things on, lads. You know what? We're going to go up. We're going to go up the gear. You know, we need to we need to see something more, lads. I know you're doing well, but, you know, the goal hasn't come yet. We, we need that goal. Anyway. Uh, let's have a look. Tell them they're expecting to prove a point. Search of. Yeah. Keep it up and the result will come. Exactly, lads. Motivation. You're going to do well, lads. Come on. Let's see what you got. I think Mason Green will be the first substitution I make in this half. Or maybe I might even bring Martial on. Anyway. Looks like they're going to have a corner. Or a, not a corner, but a, a free kick there as Belossi takes that one. Got a terrible work ethic, that guy. But, you know, he's pretty good when he, he wants to turn it on. But other than that, he's, he's just woeful. Hey, it's one CB. That's 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 not what I teach in training, but uh, we'll, we'll let it go. We'll let it go this time. Find Sabi, find the Gengis. Look for the pass. Keep the ball moving. Move it quickly. 
Move down the line. Dalo. Finds Genji's. What can Genji's work? Finds back to Dalo. Dalo's got to find something in. in. Vlahovic. What a finish. What a brilliant finish from Dusan Vlahovic. With a beauty. That's what he's good at. He is a bully in the box. And he's just bullied that Olympiacos defender into next season. I mean, I'm pretty sure Dusan Vlahovic picks up a bigger wage in a week than the, um, the Olympiacos player makes in a month. But look at that. Wide open. No chance for Jose Sa to make that save. And that is 1-0. That's the opening goal. Now, will the floodgates open? Is the dam going to break? We'll have to see here. I presume they're going to have to start playing a bit more expansive here at Olympiacos. Like, I'm guessing. But we'll have to see. I think we'll probably stick with our... Yeah, I think Greenwood will come on now. I think Greenwood's the, the ideal person to bring on. He's, he's the kind of guy I kind of want to settle into this game. Uh, I think we're gonna hold things for now. I think probably 65 and then probably 70, 75 minute. We'll look to to make the uh, the next substitution. Okay, Macy Greenwood is on. I think we'll go to the bench again just to break up the game a little bit. You know, who will we make the move for? Pogba looks a bit tired. I'm gonna save Pogba. I want to save him for the the Leeds game. And then the final substitution do we bring on Gomez on. I think Sanchez. Yeah, Sanchez. Ooh, Sanchez a bit tired. Um, you know what, we're going to do this. You know what? I think we got this game wrapped up. I'm hoping that's game wrapped up, but keeping, I think our season is going to come down to whether Sancho and Genji stay fit. If they stay fit and healthy, I think we've got a really great chance of, of potentially competing for both, but definitely winning the Premier League. And that's definitely the, I think the Premier League is the goal this season. I think that, that's the one I want to win most. Well, if you offer me that or the Premier League, I think, or this the Premier League, I think I'd take the Premier League every day and twice on Sunday at the moment. But anyway, here we go on the attack. Tillemans has a crack, doesn't quite work out. Race back to that ball, doesn't quite get there quickly enough for my liking. Tonali, what can Tonali find here? Can he find a pass? He does. He finds Tillemans with a kind of swaggy back heel. And to Dine here, into Sancho. It's not the pass we we're hoping to get in there, but I like the creativity. And Bruno, there it is, 2-0. Mason Greenwood gets in on the act. He's only been on for seven minutes, but he's got himself a goal. And our two up-and-coming strikers getting in on the act. Interesting player. I don't know what happened here. He just seemed to stop and gives the ball up. Bruno Fernandes finds Mason Greenwood. And Mason Greenwood, like any striker, doesn't care how he gets the ball to his feet. He just wants to bang it into the back of the net and see that net, see the net rattle. And that's exactly what he did there. As they immediately take off the, uh, the error player there. But that is... Uh, Pretty good result here in Greece. I'll take that 2-0 victory. It's, you know, not brilliant, not amazing, but it's uh, a good performance. It's a good win from us. And there's probably still more to come here. You know, we've still got 18 minutes to play. As Tillemans finds Dallow, I think the floodgates are going to start opening up now a little bit as, you know, they're going to have to go for it as Jaden Sancho, lovely header there. Absolutely. I mean, that's what we paid the big bucks for him for. And, you know, I probably should have paid the big bucks for him earlier. I yeah, probably should have bowed down to Dortmund and, and, and basically given them a blank check and told them to fill in the numbers and I probably should have paid it. But look, that is a, a beautiful finish. It's a quality, quality goal. And that is 3-0 up. I mean, I think there'll be a fourth and I'm potentially thinking might be even be a fifth in this one the way we're playing. But Gomez finds Sancho. This could be four. Oh, what a save by Jose Sa with an absolute worldy of a save there. Acrobatic, outstretched. Just gets to that one. But here comes the corner from Bruno Fernandes. Can't quite find the United head there. Twin CB. Oh my. I wouldn't put Twin CB as one of the guys who could pull off a move like that. But hey, he gave it a good shot. All right. So coming into the final 10 minutes here. This one's all wrapped up, I think, pretty much. I don't think there's a fifth, actually. I think there'll probably maybe a fourth in this one. But I think, you know, really, I think both sides now are kind of, you know, we're just playing for... To time waste, I think probably Olympiacos are just playing to keep the score down, but we'll keep banging that door. That's that's kind of my game plan. As Luca Digne whips it kind of aimlessly across the box there, that was kind of between three players. I don't really know what he's trying to do there, but Alatelli gets gets around Jonathan Ta too easily there. That's not not good, but thankfully to have world class still. At, I think whatever age he is now, 32 in game maybe 33, still absolutely world class and no intention of changing him just yet, but uh. Do you think we have to start looking at, at a potential De Gea replacement? What age is actually David De Gea? I think he's 32, 33, is he? 31, even better. 
you know, perfect. Sorry, Dave, if you're watching. I, I didn't mean to, to miss out you, but you've been around a while, so uh, I think I got my uh, my years mixed up. But anyway, we're into injury time here. This game's all wrapped up. I think both sides are just, just waiting for that final whistle, and that's exactly what happens. A 3-0 victory. Love to see that. Benfica and Wolfsburg drew. That's even better for us. I mean, that's probably the ideal result rather than one of them winning. Very pleased with that performance, lads. Brilliant job. Get the win done. I think the Champions League is probably going to be done by November. Usually it's done by December, or is it like... I think it's going to be a quick. So, yeah, three games in September, two in October, and one in November. Where's the... Wait, have I miscounted? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay, six. Uh, yeah, for someone who's a maths degree, this is pretty poor counting by me. But yeah, so we're doing well. I think we're going to have a lot of games twice a week as looks things, but uh, we have the squad to deal with this. I'm going to have to get a few of them probably game time somewhere along the line. A nice four game home stretch here, which will, will be which will be key. Hopefully we'll break the, the back of the Champions League group and, and get things through. But if you guys didn't see the Premier League table earlier on in the the video look at that we're four points clear already absolutely loving life at the moment where the number one goal scoring we've conceded four i mean city have only conceded two but they've dropped four points from us already so look i don't care about the conceding the four goals already i think that's a good number so far but if we can keep it below 20 this season i think we've got a really good chance you know we're you know, only need 24 more wins from 32 games so we're on the right track we need to keep banging these victories in we need to keep you know building that reserve that we have and if we keep doing that, I think we will have a title coming back to Old Trafford and having that trophy cabinet stacked once more. But anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this episode up here, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. When I come back, ooh, I think we'll come back for the Benfica game away, I believe. I think that's probably the next most logical place to come back. I think City's a bit too far away for you, unfortunately. But we'll just see how things go. I'll play through it and we'll, we'll go from there. Anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.